Hey everyone, Nick Dearbertis here teaching you financial modeling. And today I'm going to talk about how the projects are graded in this class. So, uh, you know, the main grade in the course is these uh, projects. Um, and that's going to be a lot of the value in the course is, uh, you know, doing these in-depth projects that try to get fairly close to real world projects. So as far as grading these um, projects, you know, there can potentially be, uh, you know, things which are specific to each project. But in general, the four categories which I'm looking at to grade these are the accuracy of the model, the readability of the model, the formatting of the model, and how uh, closely you have followed the template as is described in the project. Um, so before we dive into more specifically what each of these categories means, uh, let's talk about how the grading works in general. Um, so I use a combination of absolute and relative grading. Um, so, you know, if you got everything perfectly right as far as accuracy in your model, uh, then you're going to receive 100% on the model accuracy. So that's the absolute portion of the grading. Uh, the relative portion is, uh, you know, say there was some part of the project that nearly all of the class got incorrect, well then I'm going to take off a very small amount of points for getting that part of the project incorrect. So I actually look, uh, you know, I, I look at a bunch of different models, a bunch of different students' models before I assign any grades so I can understand where the common uh, issues are and take off less for those issues. Um, and then um, each category is just gonna have a percentage weight in the project, and each project has a table telling you exactly what are the percentages for this project. Um, but generally, uh, model accuracy is gonna be by far the highest at typically around 60%, and then the other categories are, are 10 or 20% each. Um, so then let's dig into the individual categories. So for model accuracy, you know, that one is, is mostly straightforward. Do you get the correct result from the model? Um, now, an important thing to consider here in the accuracy is that we're building models here. We're not just doing a single calculation. And so, you know, I'm going to give you some inputs into the model and I'm going to give you some default values of those inputs. And you know you get to the solution from that. Um, that's not necessarily enough. Even if you have you know the result completely correct based on those uh, particular inputs, your model needs to be able to adjust appropriately when different inputs are passed as well. It needs to be able to work for any reasonable value for any of the inputs. Um, and you know, in order to check this, I'm basically going in and trying a bunch of different inputs and making sure that your model matches up with what my model would give uh, for those same inputs. Um, so you know, don't just think that you're done as soon as you've gotten the baseline uh, answers correct. Make sure that you can uh, actually change around the inputs in the model and then your outputs are changing in the way that you would expect them to change from that input changing as well. Um, so that's an important skill to develop. Um, I intentionally, you know, don't give you a way to directly check that. You, it's kind of indirect in that you have to think about your model and how, the, how each input should affect the model and does your output actually uh, change in that way because once you get actually on the job and you're building out your own models, you're not going to have any answer sheet to check your model. Um, you just have to think critically about what your model should be giving you um, and ensure that it is uh, conforming to that. So I'm um, trying to get you closer to the real world there. Then thinking next about the model readability. Um, so this is about how easy for is it for me to understand what you're trying to do in the model and how easily can I navigate through the model. Uh, so thinking about Excel models, uh, are you organizing the model um, such that each kind of sub problem of the model has its own dedicated worksheet 
uh, with its own inputs and outputs? Um, have you separated the inputs and outputs appropriately? Um, do you have clear names for things? Is it clear what each input is and what each output is? Um, and do you have you know table headers um, kind of separating the different calculations, inputs, outputs, and everything? And uh, you know try to split out your calculations into multiple calculations so that they're more readable. Uh, but if you are going to have a complex calculation, there better be uh, comments explaining that calculation as well. And then uh, for Python, um, you know, with uh, Jupyter, we want to uh, organize the model into sections. The, each of those sub parts of the model is going to be a section. Uh, and you want to have each logical step of the model be a function, and each submodel be a function, and the entire model be a function. Uh, and all those functions should have uh, doc strings, which explain what they're doing. Uh, there should be comments or uh, mark down the Jupyter nicely formatted text to explain uh, what's going on in your model. The inputs should be all at the top. The outputs, main outputs, should be at the bottom. Um, and you shouldn't have super long lines going way out. Uh, basically, if I can't see it on my screen, if it, if it goes past my screen, then that's a problem. Um, and, uh, you know, there are lots of ways to break things onto multiple lines. You can use parentheses uh, or you can use a backslash. Uh, definitely uh, get in contact with me if you have that issue and you can't figure it out. Uh, but Google will be helpful for that as well. Um, and then um, are you showing intermediate results? Uh, it's better if you're kind of showing the steps along the way, what you get from each step, uh, rather than just getting all the way to the end, you just run a bunch of code and then you get one answer at the end. It's like very difficult to understand what happened in the middle. Uh, if you show these intermediate uh, results, then it becomes a lot more clear. Um, and then your names of variables, functions, and classes, do they follow the standard Python conventions? So, you know, all the code that I've shown does follow the conventions, uh, but make sure to take a look at this guide. Uh, it will give you all the detail that you need to be able to name things appropriately. Um, and then moving on to model formatting. So model formatting is, you know, about visually, how does the model look? Um, and so for Excel, you know, it really comes down to, uh, you know, the number formatting, the table formatting, um and you know having separate formatting of the inputs versus the outputs uh versus the calculations to make things very clear what uh belongs where uh and you shouldn't have like you know cells which are too short such that the text is getting cut off and you know things like that it should look nice and and be nicely laid out and everything um, and then uh, for Python, it's all about the outputs of the model. How are they formatted? Um, so are you applying the appropriate number formatting to any numbers that you're showing as your results? Um, are you including a nice sentence to explain what that result means? Um, and then um, you know, we haven't covered yet how to do tables and plots in Python, but we will get there. Um, so when we use those, making sure that those are used when it makes sense to use them and that um, they're formatted nicely um, and that plots, you know, have labels for the axes and are in a reasonable size to be including. Um, and then the last category here is following the template. Um, and this is all about you know, kind of exactly following the instructions of the project for matching a certain expected structure of the project. And the reason uh, I had to make this a grading category is because, uh, at least for the for uh, you know a majority of the projects, I have built out um, auto grading for the project. I've built code which checks the code, um, but it needs to be in that certain structure for that code to actually work. Um, so if you're not following the template appropriately, I'm going to run that on your code and it's just going to fail. And then I'm going to have to go in and figure out where you didn't follow the template properly and fix that before I can actually get the accuracy grade for your project. So that auto grader is just used for accuracy. 
Um, and basically I just run it and then it tells me if you got everything correct or if you got anything incorrect, uh, then it will also let me know. And if you do get something incorrect, then I go into your model and I dig into it and I figure out exactly where it's going wrong and I actually fix all the mistakes one by one until your model is perfect on the accuracy and the auto grader can return it as being perfect accuracy. Um, so that way I can tell you in the comments exactly the points where you went wrong in the model as far as the accuracy um, and give you in a grade uh, commensurate with that. Um, and then um, regardless of the auto grader, I'm always going through everyone's projects uh, line by line to check for the readability and the formatting purposes. But anyway, for uh, following the template, what is considered here in the grade uh, for both Excel and Python, there's often going to be a template you need to start from. So make sure that you do indeed start from that template. Um, and then thinking about Excel specifically, uh, you know, there's typically going to be, uh, you know, certain inputs and certain outputs in the template do not move any of those inputs or outputs. The locations of the cells, the cell references should stay the same uh, for the inputs and outputs. You can change the formatting if you want, the visual stuff, but the, the, the location of the cell, the cell reference should not change or it is going to break the auto grader. Um, then in Python, there's a few things. Um, so we're gonna have in the template, there's going to be this model inputs data class already defined for you. And it's going to be creating an instance of that class as model underscore data. So don't change either of these names. Keep it with model inputs. Keep it with model data. Um, and then don't uh, rename any of the variables which are defined as part of that data class. If you want to add additional variables, you can do that. They can have any names that you want, but for the ones that are there already, don't change those names. Um, and then the input should be at the top, the output should be at the bottom. Um, and then often the instructions in the project are going to say, you know, define this variable and it should have this inside the variable. It should be this certain data type and structure. Um, so make sure that you conform to that exactly. Um, for example, uh, like the first project is going to ask you for cash flows, uh, as a list of numbers. Um, so make sure that it's actually numbers in there and you don't have like formatted strings with the dollar signs and everything in them. Um, when you show the output, output it's gotta be formatted, but as far as the variable that I'm asking you to store it in, that should match exactly the data type of what I'm requesting in the project for the auto grader to work appropriately. So that wraps up uh, the overview of the grading of the projects. Um, so in the remaining videos, we're going to discuss what's involved in each project. Thanks for listening and see you next time.